Welcome back to another episode of Milkway Playground where today we'll be brominating hemp oil. Now, the reason why you would want to use hemp oil is because pound for pound, it has the most polyunsaturated fats of all the oils. This is perfect for brominating because brominating happens across double bonds and this oil has lots and lots of double bonds. So let's see if we can brominate hemp oil and is it cookable? To start, we're gonna use 100 milliliters of hemp oil. After that, we're going to use some bromine. Now bromine is very volatile, which is why you want to store it freezing prior to doing this. As you can see, the fumes are already starting to come off a little bit. That's because bromine is very volatile, like I said. And you can see a little pool of bromine here. Angry, isn't it? Now, we're going to slowly add this in. Look at those fumes. That's why you should do it slowly. After brominating our oil, I further diluted the bromine vessel with water. We're going to also add this in to make sure the oil is fully brominated. And we're also going to see our separation. Now, notice something. Oil regularly floats on top of water, not the other way around. The way we know for sure that we made our bromine oil is that our oil is on the bottom because bromine, brominated vegetable oil is 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. This means that it's more denser than water because water is only one cubic centimeter. If you shake it around and stir it and stuff, you can see a bunch of little bubbles and globules. But more importantly, you can see that our bromine water is still full of bromine. That means our oil is fully saturated with bromine and it cannot be any more, it cannot take any more bromine. It's almost like a lava lamp. To process this for cooking, we first have to get rid of the water layer. So you'd want to chill this beforehand, not freeze it because then you'd freeze your water but just chill it, that way the oil won't slip out. So, you can easily decant this, as so, and then we now have to heat up our oil. We've heated up some water, so now we're going to put our oil in. Right now, as you can see, our oil's stiff, it's not moving. It's like a blizzard, you can hold it upside down and it won't fall out. Okay, so now we're gonna plunge it in we do a couple of times just to make sure the glass adapts to the heat. We don't want this thing breaking on us. There's a small chance, but let's take precautions. Now we can slowly plunge it in. And we're gonna keep it in there for a few minutes. About 10 minutes later, let's see how our bromine oil looks. As you can see, it's very, very syrupy. It's not viscous at all. And it's certainly not frozen. You can move around and stuff and jiggle. This reminds me a lot of a lot of butter, where butter is solid at cold temperatures, but it becomes liquid at near room temperature and hotter and the hotter it gets. And this is because the bromine saturates the double bonds. 
So it kind of acts like a saturated hydrocarbon, which many animal fats are. But this isn't a saturated hydrocarbon because it's not full of hydrogen, it's full of bromine. But we're gonna see if we can still cook with this. To get our oil ready to cook, we first have to put a little dab on it. You definitely don't want to use the whole thing or a lot because then you might fry your egg and you're going to make a big mess. Spoonful is probably good. I'm just going to put a dab here, right? Then spread it around like a pizza. And then we're going to heat it up. We're gonna let that sit there for about a minute. About a minute in, as you can see, our pan is just about fully greased and we're ready to put our egg in. Now, a few notes before we do this. The steam you may be noticing is from the water vapor because the water has been sitting on top of this oil for a while, so it may have seeped into it. This isn't any sort of volatile bromine toxins. So, with that said, let's put our egg in. Let's watch that guy cook. Let's see if this bromine is non-stick. It actually is non-stick. Look, I'm able to sweep the egg up and stuff. The egg is easily able to be manipulated. So it, it, it still works as a grease. It has the same physics as any ordinary grease. Let's see if our egg is flippable. That is a horrible burn. That is ugly. Let's hope the bromine stained it and I didn't burn it. By the way, uh, side note, this oil does stain a lot of things. So if you're using any sort of glassware or whatever, just prepare it. It might get stained and it's going to be a hard to clean. After a quick sear on our egg, we're going to move it to our plate. Ooh, look how ugly that is. <sighs> that is one ugly egg. But you came to see me eat it, so we're going to do it. Now, a few words before I eat this. First of all, you may be thinking, this is very stupid. I could kill myself. I'm at risk for bromism or whatever. I can assure you that I am not because I used brominated oil, not bromine salts. Bromine salts are the real reason that can cause bromism because it can replace your, your chloride salts, which is commonly in table salt and stuff, and it could make red pustules all over you and stuff. It's really disfiguring. Versus brominating, brominated oil, which is actually in many of your sodas. Now, I think Pepsi and Coca-Cola phase that out, but many mom and pop sodas still contain brominated oil, especially in their citrus flavored drinks. With that being said, bon appétit. It's like a normal egg. It's kind of grassy, but I think it's because of the hemp oil. Um, definitely nothing out of the blue, like any sort of acidic thing or anything like that. Let's try another taste. Dip it in here a little bit. Right? Yeah. It tastes like regular oil, if anything. I can see why this is put in sodas and stuff. It tastes like nothing. It doesn't do anything to it. I bet it would taste better if I got a better cook on it. If anything, though, actually, I don't really taste any burns any either. I didn't. The egg looks ugly. You may think I burned it, but it doesn't taste burned at all, actually. Dip some of this yolk on it. 
Yeah, that's perfectly fine. So, turns out you can't cook with brominating oil. Having said that, kind of makes you wonder if we can cook with chlorinated oil and iodinated oil. We won't do it with fluorinated oil though, because that's dangerous. <laughs> but um, tell you what, if we get 1,000 subscribers, I'll do a part two of this where I cook with chlorinated and iodinated oil, and we're going to see if there's any difference. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.